we're talking today with Karen Kalish at her home in Clayton. Karen uh, founded an organization called Cultural Leadership, um, and she also um, founded a, a program called HomeWorks, the Teacher Home Visit Program. Let's uh, start with cultural leadership. So for those unfamiliar with cultural leadership, can you s succinctly explain what it's about? It's a year-long program for high school students, sophomores and juniors, to give them the skills to bring about social justice change, to learn how to stand up, speak out, and take action. To learn when they see a problem, they are to grab an ally or two or three, roll up their sleeves, and get to work to right whatever the wrong is. In terms of selecting a class, I know that the program was begun um, where you would have more or less equal numbers of Jewish students and African American students. Is that still the case, or have uh, the numbers changed some? And how large a group of students do you want in each class? We got the idea from a program in Philadelphia that started in 1985 that was just, and still is, just African American and Jewish kids to get them to learn about their own and each other's race, religion, culture, and history. When I moved back to St. Louis in 2001, it wasn't too soon after that that some people said, we need that program right here in St. Louis. So after talking to several groups, we started it just like that for African American and Jewish high school students. This community is different. And after the first year, our young people were saying to us, we have friends who want to do this program who are not black and Jewish. Can they do it? They want to do it. So that happened. The second thing that happened was that we went on, we were saying, we're teaching them not to discriminate, but we were discriminating. Mm -hmm. And number three, African Americans and Jews need allies. We need people who are not black, not Jewish, who know what it's like to be black in America and how tough it is, and know what it means to be Jewish. So finally, after the fourth year, we opened it up. We take all curious, courageous, change the world type teams, but we haven't changed our programming a bit. It is still done through the lens of the African-American Jewish experience. Shifting gears a little bit to something else that you do, the, the home visits with teachers. How did that come about? It started because I went to a, a training for community organizing, and I met a nun who told a story about home visiting going on in Texas, and I got one of those, I wish I had a V8 moment, mm -hmm. and learned everything I could, went to Texas to see it in action, and came back to St. Louis and just started it. Mm -hmm. And I was copying stuff I saw, and it didn't work, we changed, and I had allies along the way, because you can't do anything alone. So we started in St. Louis Public Schools, teaching the teachers how to go on home visits. What exactly um, is the program about, and what school systems are you in? So, we train the teachers to go to the homes of the students and how to go into the home that's often very different from theirs. And just relationship building. That first visit is just relationship building 101. And during that first visit, we have what we call the Can You Come conversation. And they go in pairs, always go in pairs. And the Can You Come conversation is we're having a dinner at school. Can you come? And often she'll say, I got all these kids. I can't come. Bring, your, bring them all. We want them all. Bring them all. Can you come? Well, I don't have a car. I'm going to get there. We'll send transportation for you and wait for you and take you home. Can you come? I have to work. Can you switch with someone? Whatever the barrier, we want them to cross the threshold of the school because we know that once they start coming to school, once the teacher and the parent know each other, kids do better. It, all the data says so. What happens is attendance goes up, achievement goes up, parental involvement goes up, and discipline goes down. Valley Park had discipline were down 67% in the first year. Math scores went up in St. Louis Public Schools. It's amazing. Yeah. But it's not amazing because when parents and teachers work together, kids yeah. do better. Yeah. So we're in St. Louis Public Schools, we're in University City, we're in Maplewood, Richmond Heights, we're in DeSoto, mm -hmm. and we're in two charter schools. One charter middle school that has made it a condition of employment. You don't work here unless you do home visits. Mm -hmm. And one charter high school. And Parkway's coming on board, and we have interests from all over the country. That's but we want to get all the kinks out. We want to get deeper before we get wider. Now, I know that you are the executive director of, of the Kalish Family Foundation. Is that what at least uh, started the seed money for both cultural leadership here as well as the home visits? I am a member of the Lucky Sperm Club. <laughs> My grandfather was rich, and I had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. But to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. So when my mother passed away, I inherited some money, and the will had been written in such a way that a chunk of it went right into the foundation. So I started actually when I was in Boston at Harvard at the CJP, the Combined Jewish Philanthropies in um, Boston, and started a donor-advised fund, which is what it is. 
It's not a separate freestanding foundation, but it acts as such. Mm -hmm. So it, it was in there, and then I switched it to the Greater St. Louis Community Foundation. So it's a fund there, and whenever I want to give money away, I want to give the money to the Federation, I just email, send mm -hmm. X dollars to the Jewish Federation, and off it goes. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works. Thank you for your time and for your passion. <laughs>